love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. Where two or more are gathered together and uh, agree, there bears witness from heaven of truth. For it is written that in the mouths of two or three witnesses shall every uh, truth be received. So receive now the truth from Billy Graham, uh, Muhammad, and two popes, Protestantism, Catholicism, and Islam all agreeing on one exact thing, that they're the truth of Jeremiah 31, verse 35, that no one really needs to be taught about God anymore beyond their understanding that his love is uh, transcendent. Billy said this, God's purpose for this age is to call out people for his name. That's what God is doing, whether they come from the Muslim world, the Buddhist world, the Christian world, or the non-believing world. These are members of the body of Christ because he called them. They might not even know the name of Jesus, Isa Yeshua, but <laughs> they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have. They turn to the only light they have, and I believe uh, that they are saved and going to be with us in heaven. Um, so this was uh, uh, in an interview uh, with the Golden uh, Cathedral guy, uh, Robert Schuller. Uh, you could uh, listen to that same recording if you look up that video uh, with them together. But one thing for sure, people, Billy did not stand alone. And the Lord has revealed all the same things unto my heart. But um, insofar as uh, Pope Benedict, um, prior to Francis, what he said, he said that Billy Graham had his salvation doctrine right. He agreed wholeheartedly. For when he revealed that our living truth loves all men equally, it was clear that Benedict correctly discerned our Prince of Peace's voice when he said, and this is what the Pope said, whoever seeks peace and the good community with a pure conscience and keeps alive their desire for the transcendent through love, they will be saved even if they lack biblical faith. Now in parentheses, I've got as long as they're born again by love, because those who love are born of God and know God, because God is love. So uh, we must keep our light of love on, or else we commit the unforgivable sin, blaspheme of the Holy Spirit, and then we would perish, because our next body is made entirely of light. Furthermore, the Roman Catholics are also following the purest light of love if they are heeding the inspired word of another pope, Pope John Paul II, who previously stressed, and he said this, all the just of earth, including those who do not know Christ and his church, under the influence of grace, are called to build the kingdom of God, the kingdom of love. So only now, when people understand their truths are true, can uh, Christ's love begin to be poured out upon all, all flesh? And lastly, Muhammad said this, uh, that anointed prince of Arabia proclaimed in the Quran, and I quote, and he said that believers and the Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whichever party believes in God and the last day and does good deeds, they shall have their reward with their Lord, and no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. And I give you this, people, that John the Beloved identified God as capital L-O-V-E. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Born again is just reflame. Uh, be as little children, Jesus said. And, and born again, Jesus said uh, that you can't even know which way. It's like the wind. You don't know where it blows. But one thing's for sure, all three of these voices stand in agreement. And Muhammad said that if they believe in God, but you know, he is love. God is love. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love, capital L. That is his name. And that is what John the Beloved named God, his truest classification, his, his truest 
uh, description, his truest characteristics. He is love, and he was slain before the foundation of the earth for all people to keep their love light on until the end. And uh, But when uh, Muhammad says you must believe in love or in God, he, he meant that you must believe in love. Because if you if you love and believe in love, you believe in God, whom that's His name. <laughs> you might not know Him by a particular name, but uh, our Lord of Love is not petty. He doesn't. Bzz, that's it for you. You didn't know the right name. No, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten love. So whosoever should love should not perish, but have everlasting love and everlasting life and love goes before him. So praise the Lord and pass, pass the ammunition. And the ammunition is Islam and Christianity, Catholicism and Protestantism, all merging into one. The Lord has named them Chrislam. And the reason Chrislam is because it was foretold in Isaiah 62 too, that when Israel gets their new covenant, the Kingdom Age new covenant prophesied for the latter days in Jeremiah uh, 31.1 and Jeremiah 30.24, that they would have a new name, and that is the name he has assigned them, Chrislam. And I am Daniel, the father of Chrislam, and myself and my younger sister, we arise as two new Billy Grahams. We're producing these uh, videos for people's growth and uh, uh, so that love can arise and burn down earth because the dreaded one world religion is the one world religion of John 10 16 with our Lord arising as the good shepherd over absolutely all the flocks of God. No more shall he be known as the God of the Christians. And he refutes that and rebukes that. And he says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. And he's pouring out his spirit of love upon all flesh because there's nothing that anybody needs to do in order to receive their inheritance of eternal life. They already have it given unto them and God is not an Indian giver, and that's not politically correct, but you know what I mean. Um, but one thing for sure, his love uh, goes before him, and proof is in the Word of God. And in this hour, he, the Lord says to all people, he says, my messenger of Malachi 3.1, the covenant messenger, now gives the message. And he says unto all flesh, at everlastingly, the everlasting covenant of between him and all mankind is this people. He says, I shall forgive your iniquity and I shall remember it no more. Satan to the pit for a thousand years. And then he says, I'm going to write my law and my love upon your heart. And no one shall ever need to be taught of me again beyond this, says the Lord. For once you know that he is unconditional love um, over us, there's nothing more to know. And the unconditional aspect was hidden. There was a veil all throughout the centuries. But what has happened, people, the first are last and last are first. One of the last things was Satan being thrown in the pit. So it's therefore one of the first. And that is is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said many times. And because the first is last and last is first, I come forth with the sickle of God. In Amos 9, Jesus, Isa, Yeshua, he has been the sower of the seeds of love who has now overtaken his end time reaper. I am Daniel, his messenger of Isaiah 49. And that message is that the hiddenness is gone and removed because when you identify the Kingdom Age New Covenant as the Kingdom Age New Covenant and you move it intellectually to where it was prophesied for the end times, Jeremiah was told in Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 said the same thing. He said, Jeremiah, I'm going to tear down all the kingdoms of man and imaginations at the end. And he was talking about all the man-made religions because all all the man-made religions have had if, ands, and buts, and there was no if, ands, or buts in Christ's valid kingdom age voice to all mankind, that uh, he's going to love them unconditionally and remember not their sin. And if he did, if there was a judgment day for our sin, then God would be a liar. Billy Graham knew this.
the two popes knew this, and so did uh, Muhammad. So uh, these are the days once the perfect covenant has been given. These are the days when the voice of the Apostle Paul speaks up, Hebrews 8, and he declares, once again resounding from the heavens above, that all, all religion of man is now obsolete because the perfect covenant has come. There was a time when the alcoholic could not inherit the kingdom of God, nor could this one, or nor could that one, and it was uh, it was metaphorically uh, wink wink, uh, a veil was over it. But the truth is, now people can receive right now their inheritance and take that to the bank and know for good for sure that they have the eternal life that is promised to all people of love if they shall just keep their love light on and blaze for love for uh, the Lord is love and a whirlwind of the splendor of his magnificence comes forth as he pours out the floodgate from heaven and the latter day rain and the rain and uh, all the rain together it has a deluge of his adoration and his charity and his benevolence that shall evermore go beyond us. And it averts destruction and changes the future. And the Lord says, even now, his words resound from a cloud. And he says that unless the age of grace had been cut short, uh, that no flesh could be saved. And the way he has cut the age of grace short is through the activation of his kingdom age intellectually so that it can even begin, people. So love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. Stay tuned, stay charged, stay ready because now is is the time for the great restoration and the great refreshing that was foretold by uh, Peter in Acts 3, 21. And unless this takes, he said that Jesus is kept in reserve in heaven and cannot even return. For I am Elijah who has restored all things exactly as it is written in Matthew 17, 11. But really I restored nothing because it is only the Lord's word alone that restores his own word with no unlawful uh, insertions uh, because when in the new covenant uh, misunderstood and in the wrong place invalid and uh, uh, Christians changed God's word uh, they said we are Israel and it is finished the prophecy is for now for everybody who believes no, 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 it was for the latter days and it was correctly addressed to Israel and all mankind, always has been. And so what came forth was a distortional false god of love with condemnation in his mouth for all of us uh, from heaven when there was none there. And for 2,000 years, this means that we've had nothing but desolate heritages, exactly as it was foretold correctly in Isaiah 49, 8. Read it and weep. So now it's time for days to burn as an oven, to, to have our beliefs and uh, everything adjusted according to the word of God. And the proud and the arrogant are now to be left without root or branch, and they shall have nothing to cling on to. They are the tares that shall no longer grow with the wheat. People of love shall come with me, and the rest shall be left behind. But the good news is, people, and I leave you with this thought, that because the Lord is cutting the age of uh, grace short and starting the kingdom age intellectually now, because he is doing this, that shall bring the peace that Isaiah 2 foretold in the latter days that we would beat our swords into plowshare and l learn the ways of war no more. For you cannot have that future and the future of Armageddon too. Uh, Zechariah foretells the eyes and the tongue would consume away. It's gonna happen, people.